What's going on everybody? It's your favorite auntie Mo. We are back for another review. This is a review for Black Ink Crew Chicago. Season 7, episode 18, Deja Vu. Um, before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down. And hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content. Um, Y'all, this episode, it was good. It had some good parts to it. Of course, it had its drama to it. But... I feel like it was some parts of the episode where it was some trickery shit going on. Like, it was scripted. Some of it wasn't for real, for real. That's neither here nor there. We're going to get into it in a minute. Um, uh, Yeah, let's go ahead and get into the bullshit, y'all. So, Ryan is meeting with the owners and the promoters of the White Sox baseball team, right? They reached out to him because they know that Ryan does a lot of giveaway tattoos, right? And so they want to do a sweepstakes giving away 30 tattoos to the biggest 30 White Sox fans. And Ryan is all with it. He says his favorite team is the White Sox. That um, Because, of course, you know, they, Chicago... And um, it'll be a good look for the shop. Way better than the ratchet ass shit that they used to see in from Nine Mag. Ron is excited about it. I'm excited for them. So hopefully this will give them a whole better light that they've been in than this ratchet ass shop that is all the twerking and the fighting and the weed and the, and the alcohol and all of that. So that's a good look for Ryan. Everything hopefully will turn out well with that. We're going to see where that one goes. Y'all, Dawn is practicing Ramadan, okay? And a part of him practicing Ramadan, he is practicing semen retention, okay? That is where you orgasm without actually ejaculating. Y'all, the shit sounds dumb as hell to me, okay? It, it just sounds dumb as hell to me. I don't know if that's a real thing. I don't know if that can really happen. But he said it has not been working for him, which it, it wouldn't work. Why? I mean... I'm not going to start the race and not finish the race. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we going, we already up in that thing, we going to finish that thing. We not going to be like, uh, uh. all right, all right, I'm cool. No, that's not how that works. And instantly, I started hurting when he said that. I'm like, you going, you, ooh, ooh, what that feel like? I don't know what that shit feel like. But anyways, um, they sitting up there, they talking and they chilling. Next thing you know, Charmaine bring her loud ass back up in the shop they looking at her the same way i was looking at her why is she here ike why is she here i thought you left because you were stressed out it was just too hard on your mental but you're back Okay, mm and of course we all know the reason why she back is because Lily is gone. She said Van called her up the first chance he got to let her know that Lily has been fired. And of course Charmaine got a whole list of reasons why y'all could have fired that bitch a whole long time ago. But the numerous of times that she drugged Charmaine's ass, the numerous of other fights she's been in, plus she done gave Charmaine a whole black ass eye, plus she done cut Charmaine dude out. So... Lily should have been gone a long fucking time ago. Kudos to y'all for finally getting rid of her ass, okay? She, it, it was long overdue. But um, Charmaine wants to come back to Nine Mag now. She wants to come back as a celebrity liaison. Now, okay, okay, let's just let's just keep it real. When she was a celebrity li liaison or whatever, a couple of episodes, a couple of seasons ago, as far as I know that I remember, she bought in one, one for show I remember, maybe two celebrities. Other than that, Charmaine didn't bring in no goddamn celebrities. And 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 she worked at WGCI. Like they said, you around the celebrities all the time. They had just put up a picture. Charmaine ass had took a picture with the baby or little baby or a baby. I don't know one of them goddamn babies. She had just took a picture with one of the babies outside the shop. With the same outfit that she had on, so they knew it was a recent picture. It's like, okay, so y'all took a picture outside the shop, bitch. You couldn't bring him in? You want your job back, bitch. I need you to bring a resume. That would have been a part of your resume. You bought one of the babies in to get a tattoo. But, girl. So, they tell her, they like, okay, if you come back as a celebrity liaison, bitch, you got to work. You got to liaison some celebrities. You can't just come up in here twerking and smoking and drinking up all our shit. And you ain't, you ain't doing no celebrity liaison shit. I need you to actually goddamn work. So she like, okay, well, um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm back and, and I'm a 
get all the celebrities in here, whoop de woo yada, yada, yada. And Van said that they never chose Lily's side over Charmaine. Charmaine chose to leave. That was her choice because she didn't want to be around Lily no more. So, of course, now that Lily gone, now she want to bring her ass back, right? So, in what better non-mag form, they want to welcome Charmaine back, but with a party. Now, well, some niggas make my edges itch. If y'all ain't learned from the last couple times that y'all throw parties at 9 Mac, y'all parties don't always end well. They don't. Y'all getting drunk, somebody sent the fight, and then y'all niggas are gonna once again bring down the motherfucking property value. Like, what, what, what the fuck is we doing here? But hey, we gonna have a party. We gonna let Jesus take the wheel on that party. So Lily is having drinks with Bella, AKA Latifah, right? And so Bella asked her, how did everything go when she went to see the doctor last time, right? And so, you know, Lily still kind of, you know, she's in her feelings about that. She doesn't really want to talk about it, but she does say she's moving back to Texas where she has family. So I don't know if she's moving there for a job to follow up with the doctor. I don't know, but Lily going back to Texas, whoop the fucking whoop, right? So, Lily tells her that she invited Evanita to come and have drinks with them because Evanita has been dying to reach out to her, to talk to her, because she says she has something to tell her. Now, if y'all don't know who Evanita is, Evanita is a chick that Van was fucking around with on the last, ep or last season. She was a chick that he had brought, she, he said that she was his assistant. But really, she was assisting that dick is what she was doing. And so they had went to Vegas last year. And so she came along because she was the assistant. Again, she was she was assisting that dick. So he was actually fucking around with Evanita, right? Things didn't end really well with them. It ended on a bad note. So she says that she told Evanita that she could come there and hang out with them. Her only condition was you need to apologize to Bella. Because Bella didn't do shit to you. You need to apologize to her. So, Bella, of course, she's like, I don't know about this bitch. Because, you know, last time I seen her, the bitch knocked the whole two-piece and coleslaw and mashed potatoes out of my hand. Which, off the rip, I'm a foodie. Bitch, I ain't got shit else to say to you. You done knocked my motherfucking food out my hand. L much less some chicken. Oh, don't let it be some snow crabs. Bitch, we fight ting. We hood rat fight with no shoes on. In the middle of the goddamn street. Bitch, don't play with me and my food like that. So, in walks Evanita. The bitch walked in with the shits. She had on this old Sasquatch, Lion King, Fur Mane coat. And I, I do understand it is cold in Chicago, but bitch, the dramatics of it all. Like, it was all out to here. She walked in like the second of life. It was all around her. Look fucking crazy as hell, right? So when she come in, the first thing she does do is she apologizes to Latifa, a.k.a. Bella. And she tells her that, you know, she was just caught up in her feelings behind Van. Van was having her feel some kind of way. And so she was taking it out on everybody else. And so... Bella says that her apology was sincere and that she forgives her. Bitch, that's that apology was not sincere. She said what the hell she needed to say so she could have her some camera time. But Bella's so dingy in the head sometimes. Like, girl, it wasn't nothing sincere about that apology. Like, for real? Girl. Anyways, so... Bella, again, like I said, she forgives her, says that she appreciates the apology. But she was like, well, I hear you have some tea, so I need to know what's the tea. Evanita claims that she heard Van and Charmaine fucking around in Vegas. Now, y'all, I don't believe her. I don't know Van. I don't know Charmaine. I wasn't in Vegas, and I know they say everything that happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But guess what? I don't believe Charmaine fuck with Van. I don't. Van ain't tall enough. Van don't look like he's her type. Van, um, Charmaine don't look like she's Van's type. But then again, she got a cooch. So Van, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to say that about, about Van, but I really don't think they messed around, y'all. That's just me. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Put down in the comments. I just don't think they messed around. But, um, y'all see, I'm trying to fix my twist now. My twist trying to, uh, bitch, you better get your life. Stay your ass up in there where you're supposed to be.
See, I don't believe shit that Evangelista got to say because she says in her green screen that she wants to get revenge back at Van and back at Nine Mad because they disrespected her, right? Now, she claims that when they got back from Vegas that Van told her that he didn't want to fuck around with her no more. Of course, because you done went there and told everybody that she was a side chick, so you done fucked up his, you blew up his spot. He don't want to fuck with you no more. So she says that she is out to get um, revenge against Nine Mad, right? Lily tells her, well, Bella told me it's a party at Nine Mag, and um, it's welcoming Charmaine back, so I know Van gonna be there. You know Charmaine gonna be there, so, um, you know what I'm saying? You ought to roll up over there. Now, that would have been Bella's opportunity to let her know, bitch, don't go there. I'm telling you, don't go there, don't go there, because you're gonna be going there and start some shit. So, but, she doesn't tell her not to go, but she doesn't tell her to go either. She's just like, girl, um, um, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. She's like, I said, she, she wants her to go. Cause you already know she wants to see some shit go down. So she's telling her not to go, but she really ain't telling her to go either. You know what I'm saying? One of them kind of goddamn things, but we going to try what I tell you, them nine mad parties. They don't ever end well. Y'all, Don is out ring shopping with his son, DJ, for um, his wife, Ashley. DJ is so damn cute. I love DJ. He is just the sweetest, cutest little boy in the relationship that Don has with his son. Don, hold on, hold on. Okay, Don has grown up, okay? Don, to me, is the classic example of how a nigga go from being a nigga fuck boy to being a grown-ass goddamn man right before your eyes. Like, he is down for his wife, he loves his wife, and ah, uh, it was just, I was here for it. Don, I was here for it. So he's out ring shopping for a new ring for Ashley, right? Because he wants to renew his vows because you know he fucked up the last wedding. They got married in Jamaica, right? And you know, Don fucked around with a whole strip of the night before the wedding, then came to the wedding drunk, high, late, and his clothes was all fucked up. He fucked up that wedding, y'all. Fucked it up. So he wants to make it up to her, right? So he's in the jewelry shop and he's looking for a new ring. And he finds a ring that he really does like. He's like, this is beautiful. I just hope that she likes it as much as I do. And the jeweler is like, if y'all already married, why don't you just bring her in here? Let her pick out her own ring. It ain't like, I mean, come on now. It ain't like you proposing for the first time. And he was like, yeah, that makes sense. I would want my husband to do that for me. I understand, like, you picked out my engagement rings and my wedding rings. Boom, boom, I get that. But if you don't renew my vows, which hopefully, um, and he know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, take me there and let me pick out my own ring. I like that too or whatever, right? And so, later on, bitch, Don got a private chef. He got the whole house with candles and flowers and smell good shit all up in there. He got on his little old sweater with the muscles all poking out and shit like that, dude. He was looking caught. He was looking like, daddy shark, do, 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 do. daddy shark, do, do. he was looking cute as hell. So, Ashley walks in and she's like, oh my God, Don, this for me. Bitch, who else is going to be for? Stop. Quit playing. Get out of my face with that. So, he's like, I just want to show you how much I love you, how much I appreciate you. I know I've been working a lot. I know I've been at the shop a lot. So, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you and how much I love you. And I just want you to know I forget about you. I was just like, damn, splash. He would have. He got all this flower, goddamn it. Let me tell you. He got it all. But she was just crying. It was really cute. And so he got down on one knee. And he came with a little ring box, right? She opened up. She's like, nigga, ain't nothing in it. What the fuck? And he's like, that's just it. I want you to go to the jeweler with me. I want you to pick out your own ring. And I want, to, I want us to renew our vows in Africa. Bitch, he tells her she can pick any place she want to go in Africa. And they're going to go there and renew their vows. Bitch, where? You gonna take me to the motherland? Hum da 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 da. Uh, um da 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 da. I'd have been all for it, baby. I'd have been all for it. I'm proud of you, Dom. Proud of you, bro. You done came through. You done went from boys to men up in this bitch, and I ain't even mad at you, Ashley. You better hold on to him, cause it's about 5,100 bitches around the corner waiting to snatch his ass up. All that hard work you put in to bringing his ass up to be the man he is now, but you hold on. To that nigga there. Proud of you, bro. You did good, Don.
So Van takes his daughter on this college tour to NIU, NAU, NU. I don't, I don't know. It was a college, right? He took her there to do this little tour, and I like Dan, uh, Van. He's a cool ass daddy. He told her he wants her to have a better experience in college than he had. He said he went to the school that he's going to um, take her to visit. He said he went there, but he fucked it up. He's telling her, because she was like, well, if you fuck, why would you want me to go there? He's telling her the school was good. My, I did myself. I fucked it up. But I want you to go there and do better at school than I did. Just because I fucked up doesn't mean the school is messed up, right? And so they go there. The tour guide is giving them, or the campus tour guide or whatever, is giving them a little tour of the campus, right? And so she's asking about the school. And so he's telling her, like, we are well known for being a party school, but we're also top rated in business. If y'all know the name of the school, I forgot it and I forgot to write it down. Y'all put it down in the comments. But, um, it was cute. The Zetas came out and did their little thing. The Omegas came out and did their little step or whatever. It was really, really cute. But... She tells Van that she don't want to go to college right now. She wants to go to the National Guard first. Then she wants to go to college. And Van ain't with that shit. He like, what the fuck? You're like, they gonna, they gonna deploy your ass out to goddamn Afghanistan and Iraq and all these other motherfucking places. No, I'm not with that. And she tries to tell him that, you know, the National Guard is like the, the lowest of the chain as for, you know, who gets sent out or deployed or whatever, right? But baby, what you fail to realize is if it's a National uh um, a natural disaster, bitch, y'all gonna be the first ones that's out there. Like the Katrinas and the tsunamis and the, all these other tornadoes and shit with the names, you gonna be one of the front lines on the way there rescue search and all of that. So, bitch, you ain't nowhere, and not, not calling her bitch, but you ain't nowhere exempt with it. And so, he's like, well, you know, I need to do my research on that, which he does go to do his research, and he's like, well, I done looked that up too, and over 60% of people in the National Guard get deployed. So don't get it twisted. It can not happen to you. He says that the conversation isn't over with. They're going to talk about it later. Here's my thing, though. Why the fuck you make your daddy waste all that goddamn gas driving out to that college when you knew off the rip that you weren't going to go to college? Because she even said that she made up her mind and can't nobody change her mind. You could have said that on the way there. We could have stopped and, and got something to eat then. Why you have to make me drive all the way out here and make these people waste their time? Let the Zetas and the Omegas do a whole step just for you to say you don't want to go to college right now. You, She says she going to go eventually, but she going to go to the National Guard. Girl, you could have saved. Gas ain't cheap. You could have saved your daddy $30 worth of gas on that, girl. The fuck out here playing with people money. So it's White Sox Day at 9 Mag, right? They got 30 of their, you know, biggest White Sox fans there, and they're giving away tattoos. Ryan has 15 artists working, and they knock out them 30 tattoos like it ain't nothing. I think this is the most tattooing I've seen on both of the Black Inks combined. Black Ink New York and Chicago. This is the most tattooing I've seen on a single episode here out of all of them together. This right here. And it was cute. Everybody that was getting a tattoo all looked like they was getting some kind of White Sox tattoo. It was a different, you know, but it was all something related to White Sox, whatever, right? It was real good. It was a good look for him. And um, I'll say this, right? Ryan, in my opinion, is one of the best tattoo artists on reality TV, period. That's just my opinion. Fight me in the street with no shoes on if you want to. I don't give a damn, I ain't scared. That's just my opinion. Now, Cobra is cold in the motherfucker, too. Cobra's pulling in at a strong second. But Ryan, I'm sorry, Ryan is the best to me. Fight. Act up, you can get snatched up. Van does a portrait on Kamila. I don't know if it's Kamila or Camila Harris. She's the daughter of Precious, who is T.I.'s sister. As you know, she passed away um, last year of a car, asthma attack related to a, a car wreck or something like that. And so she does, uh, she wants to get a portrait of her mom on her forearm. Now, I can totally relate to, I, I've never said this on one of my videos before, but I lost my mom to cancer in 2007. And to this very day, 12 years later, I am not over losing my mother. It is the hardest thing. Now, I've dealt with many deaths, but losing my mother was the hardest thing that I've ever had to deal with in my life. So, 
for her to have the portrait of her mom on her arm, something that she can look at every day. I know the feeling because I want to get a portrait of my mom as well on my arm because it is, you know, something I can see as a constant reminder of her. I did, however, after she passed away, I got her signature off of her um, driver's license and I got a tattoo behind my neck because my mama, me and her, she used to always say, I got your back, I got your back. And so that was my way of, you know, keeping my mama with me. She always got my back. But anyways, um, he did this tattoo on the forearm, Van did it. It turned out fly, dope as hell. I was completely proud of you, Van, because, you know, you already got this shit going on with this damn tattoo scandal that's going on. So that too was bomb. Very proud of you, bro. Very, very proud of you, right? Y'all, it's the night of the nine mag party, right? Ryan is there. He's talking shit at the same damn time, but he is there. He got a drink in his hand, showing off his little abs for the bitches and shit. Party going good. Next thing you know, Charmaine walk in and she loud as fuck. Louder than usual. Everybody just looking like she wasn't like, hey, 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 hey. like loud, like bitch. Turn that volume down. She was loud as fuck. Everybody, Ryan, Van, Ford, it was all like, shit, girl. All right, you in the house. We got it. Shut the fuck up. So, <laughs> it's good to see, too, her and Ashley are like besties. It's real fucking weird. Because you remember in the first season, Ashley damn near beat the shit out of Charmaine twice. Because, you know, Charmaine was fucking around with Dawn. Since then, her and Dawn have squashed it. They've moved on. But it's real weird. Like, her and Ashley are like besties now. It's weird. Ashley had a whole king cake for and everything. Because the theme of the party was Mardi Gras. As you know, Charmaine is from Louisiana. So, they wanted her to feel like she's at home. So, they had the whole Mardi Gras theme. Bella... Flash her titties for some beads. Girl, you could have kept them little nips where they was at, child. But um, it was cute. Party going good. Everybody getting a swerve on. Next thing you know, Ebenezer Langelista come walk her ass in through the door. Soon as she walk in, everybody like, oh, shit. It's about to go down. Jen instantly gets pissed. Jen is um, Van's girlfriend. Jen gets pissed. Now, let me tell you something. Jen was cute. Jen had on this neon lime green dress. Her hair was cute. Makeup was cute. She was looking fucking flawless. She was too cute to be doing the most. She instantly got pissed. Ryan and Van had to take this bitch to the back of the shop. She was so loud. Cussing, why is this bitch here? Why are you talking to this bum ass bitch? Like loud, like girl, you was too cute to put together. Like she was doing the absolute fucking most, right? And so she's yelling at Don, telling, I mean, yelling at Van, telling Van, kick this bitch out. Tell this bitch she needs to go. If I come to the front, I'm coming with some smoke. So you need to tell this hoe to leave. Eventually, they got her to leave because I don't think she was anticipating all of that heat that was coming her way. I think she just thought she was going to strut up in there, little whoop de whoop kiki being petty, and then going about her way. No, baby, Jen was with the shits. She was like, bitch, you want to be with the shits? I'm going to be with the shit shits. I'll fight your ass with my hair done, in my lime green, looking like a fucking million dollar bill. She wasn't ready for that. Evangelista wasn't ready for that. So she went on ahead, got the hell on up out of there, right? Now... Bella then decides she wants to make it her mission to interject and be like, no, Van, wait, she was here to apologize and she has something to say. Jen, like, fuck that bitch, apologize for what? She ain't got to apologize for shit and what the fuck she got to say. Like, fuck that hoe, what the fuck I love her, And so she's like, well, Bella with her dramatic ass, well, she, um, I didn't say excuse me. I burped a few minutes ago. That was gross. Excuse me. She was like, well, um, I just, uh, uh, like she's, cause she's being real fucking dramatic about it, right? So Jen and Charmaine, everybody's like, bitch, what? Just say it. She's like, well, um, she said that Van and Charmaine had sex in Vegas. She said you and Charmaine had sex. Like real fucking dramatic. Girl. 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 
Now y'all, again, like I said, I was not in Vegas. I don't know Van Johnson. I don't know Charmaine. I don't know nothing about them, but I do know Charmaine and Van did not fuck around. No, they didn't. You gotta, you gotta explain that one to me. I'm so you gotta explain that one to me. Charmaine have to come. She got to hit me up herself and tell me that they fucked around. Cause I don't believe that. They just don't look like each other's type at all. And everybody's just like, bitch, shut up. But they asked Don Four and Ryan all in their confessionals. First, they asked Four, "Do you think Van and Charmaine fucked around?" Four gonna say, "Well, shit." They say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. They asked Ryan. Ryan was like, "Shit, I don't know nothing." I don't know nothing, man. I don't know nothing. They asked Don. Don, do you think Charmaine and Van fucked around? Don says. <laughs> Van, of course, was denying it. Charmaine, of course, was denying it. But the shit seemed real fucking sketchy to me. Like, they wanted us to believe that they fucked around because that was the end of the episode right there. Like, it ended with Don laughing, not a yes, not a no, with him just laughing. So, they setting it up like they want us to believe that they actually fucked around. We'll see on the next episode. Again, um, Ben and Charmaine, they, they got to say that they self because I don't believe for one minute that they fucked around. That's just me. That's just my opinion. But y'all, that was the episode. It was okay. Was it watchworthy? I'm knocking shit over. Was it watchworthy? No. I got the review right here for you. 27, 28 minutes or less. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this review. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.